All right. Well, uh, what? Uh, well, tell us about your debate. Like, how did? Uh, what did they? Uh, what was the debate like? Did you find that they they had any sort of uh, points? Is there any parts that you couldn't answer? Were there? Did they address your points? Uh, uh, did they at least address your points in an intellectually honest manner? Yeah. Well. Uh, you know, that's a tough call to say, you know, like in terms of my debate with, if you're speaking specifically of Matt Berkowitz, I imagine, on the video uh, yes, debate? Yes, or the, the Okay, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, they're, they're uh, both uh, Matt and I, and this can speak generally to the anarcho-capitalist mentality and the philosophical premises that they accept and the, and the quite contrarian philosophical premises that the uh, uh, zeitgeisters accept are very antithetical in a lot of ways that goes beyond economics. Um, for example, um, when it comes to the issue of, uh, let's take money, for example, uh, they have, a, they hold, they seem to hold an intrinsic view, and though they wouldn't explicitly espouse this out in the open and, and articulate it as such, but however, going into a theoretical terrain, I believe that they are intrinsicists in that they hold that the good resides in and of itself, and, and, and the bad can also reside in and of things that are quite separate from human volition, because they are, uh, they don't believe in a volitional consciousness, they're determinists. Now when it comes to money, they hold it as an intrinsic, they hold it as an intrinsic disvalue, that money as such, it doesn't have to be in the corruption of uh, money, of the money supply, uh, as uh, inflicted by the government when it comes to fiat money. It's the monetary system as such that they're against. So money holds an intrinsic evil. And, uh, and with this, uh, basically, it's nothing more than a rationalization, because when you look at what money is, it's nothing more than a great facilitator uh, for the purpose of, of trade. Now, where you have trade, where you have uh, uh, a division of labor society, where you have production and, uh, and division of labor, and uh, where one has to uh, earn th their life, that's nothing that's imposed upon you by other men, by other human beings. It is, as you've said, that you touched on in your own little uh, tie right there, that uh, we have to work. Uh, and produce in order to, to survive. What is true on a deserted island is absolutely true. It is no different than in a society filled with 35 million people or 35 billion people. We have to, we have to think. Life is thought in action. Now, the great benefit of living in a modern society is the fact that we have a division of labor. We don't have to do everything. We don't have to, uh, hunt, uh, fish and build our hammocks and, uh, and put the mud huts together and whatever. Look at the, the enormous wealth that society has. And that is strictly uh, because due to the fact of uh, production and to the, the division of labor. And you have to earn your keep, so to speak. Now, the, the great enemy that money is, is that, is that it distinguishes between the earned and the unearned. Uh, money is, is represents producers and, and consumers, and they're both the same kind of person. So they do want some kind of like automatic guarantee, irregardless of their actions and decisions that they make, uh, that they don't want to be, they don't want to, you know, fall through the, uh, the social cracks of reality, so to speak. They want an automatic guarantee that their well-being and livelihood will be pr provided with them. And you do not have that in a monetary system. That's a great threat.